Well, well, well. Looks like Google may finally have to face the music over their business practices. And it looks like creators might be taking a big hit in AdSense revenues because of it. That's not exactly the kind of news that any of us wanted to hear, is it? But it's certainly something worthy of some roasted opinions. Ah, Google. The flagship company of Alphabet Incorporated, owner of YouTube, the platform which tens of millions of creators use and from which many creators earn money. Well, at least for now, because it seems that 50 states and territories in the U.S. have launched simultaneous investigations into Google, specifically its advertising practices from which it, and the creators on YouTube, earn money. These investigations aren't happening in a vacuum either. They coincide with federal investigations into unfair trade practices and antitrust violations. Now, for perspective, Google AdSense currently provides about a third of the total advertising share for the Internet. Internet advertising is, in turn, about 54% of all advertising in the United States. So AdSense will absorb about 20 cents of every advertising dollar spent in this year. That's a big chunk of money, especially when one considers that in 2019, the projected total advertising budget in the United States will be about $240 billion. AdSense is at least a $48 billion cash cow of revenue for Google, and that number may go as high as $60 billion. What you see happening at high speed right now is a web search conducted over the course of about an hour by a volunteer. Thanks, Tater, for doing this. Tater uses an ad blocker which keeps count of every pop-up blocked. He reset his browsing history and the counter on his ad blocker before he began this web search, just so that we could show you exactly how many ads you see when you surf the web. Keep in mind that about a third of all this advertising is AdSense. Now that counter keeps ticking over, and at the end of browsing everything from power supplies to Bob Ross, a total of 135 ads were blocked. That's about one every 26 seconds that he spent browsing. And this is going on every single day on every computer in the United States on which someone is browsing every hour. Still, when taken in absence of other factors, Google controlling 20% of the market share in advertising isn't an antitrust issue. After all, they do have competition. But then there are other factors. That's right, the Google algorithms. It's always the algorithms, isn't it? The algorithms direct traffic towards certain sites and away from others. They direct traffic towards certain content on social media and away from others. They direct targeted advertising towards the users of Google and its subsidiaries, and thanks to Google Chrome, they control about 70% of the desktop internet market share. If you can't Google it on the Google machine, it might as well not exist online. And that's the point. Because Google is the dominant browser, they can direct results to Google applications and sites which contain more Google AdSense placements. That could be helping some creators out by driving views towards monetized channels, but it's trashing small channels in the rankings when they come up with something just as good. So small channel creators who haven't monetized are fighting even harder just to break into monetization. But because they are driving traffic primarily to Google Apps and Google AdSense-enabled content, Google may also be competing unfairly. So, all of those monetized creators who are trying to maintain and grow their revenue streams from AdSense may be facing another adpocalypse. This one will hit everyone, too, not just creators whom Google thinks are advertiser-unfriendly. In fact, the biggest hits may rain down on the biggest earners for YouTube. Those corporate channels for whom research have shown the YouTube algorithms have a strong preference and whose content starts trending as soon as it hits 10,000 views? Oh yeah, they will probably be hit hardest because of the preferential treatment they get from the algorithms. That will hurt cable news outlets badly, but even more so will the impact be felt by print media organizations who have migrated the bulk of their circulation onto the internet. 
Imagine, if you will, a major print media outlet which uses Google AdSense to place ads on all of its content. The paper's hard copy circulation cannot justify the staff maintained by the organization, so Google AdSense is keeping this organization viable, and the Google search engine is driving their online content into the top results. You see, if these investigations reveal that Google is unfairly competing by driving all of this traffic, this huge market share, into their own applications using their browser and highlighting their ad placements, Google may be using an unfair advantage to control the marketplace. I've talked about this before in a previous video. Denying fair access to the marketplace is as much of an antitrust violation as controlling a monopoly. If these investigations decide that Google is competing unfairly, then AdSense could be very well shut down or at least severely curtailed. This investigation can puncture that revenue stream. Now that's a heck of a theory, Roast, but I bet you can't give me one example of a major print media outlet that would be this vulnerable. No, I can't give you one example. I can give you several. I had to do some research into public financials, but each and every one of these major print news organizations receives 10% or more of their annual revenue from their digital circulation. And each of them also uses AdSense to place advertising. An antitrust ruling against Alphabet will hit them right in their revenue streams too. Moreover, these major cable news outlets feature significant amounts of online content and also use AdSense. Why? Because the top results on Google News searches yield content with Google AdSense, just like Google Video Content searches yield monetized YouTube content first. That's how the algorithms work to help AdSense make lots of money for Alphabet. Oh, and don't think for a second that Alphabet missed the warning signs. In 2015, Google created Alphabet as a parent holding company for Google and its subsidiaries, and in September 2017, Google was converted to an LLC. Interesting timing on that one, seeing as the James Damore incident occurred in August of 2017. Hmm. The fact that Google is an LLC allows the income from Google to pass through to the sole owner, Alphabet, while preventing the liabilities from Google from passing through, including the liabilities from legal actions if no one can prove that Alphabet actually ordered Google to do a thing. In short, these investigations could effectively shatter Google LLC into dozens of separate companies and Alphabet cannot be held liable for any resulting government fines. What's more, when the companies are broken up and sold off, Alphabet is the one that profits from them. The owners of Alphabets could sell their stock and sail off into the sunset, rich beyond the dreams of avarice. And if YouTube survives, their entire revenue stream will have to be restructured. While that happens, I wonder just how many fully monetized channels will survive the loss of their AdSense revenue. This, folks, is a big deal. It's big enough that every content creator should pay attention to it. YouTube is a significant resource of potential AdSense placements. Those ads are what pay for YouTube to keep running as well as pay the monetized creators a share of the revenue. But that advertising is actually not being paid to YouTube. It's being paid to Google. The money that YouTube needs to operate is being sent down from the parent company Google, and YouTube operates basically as a dead-even proposition or even at a loss for tax purposes. We need to keep an eye on this. We didn't make this mess, and nobody with a brain supports Google abusing loopholes in the law to violate the principles of fair market competition. But we, as independent creators who are posting our content to YouTube, can certainly get caught by it. For now, creators need to make sure that the content is backed up onto their own computers. Creators should also start looking, if they haven't already, for alternate platforms which would suit for uploading their content and they need to find as many different sources of revenue as they can come up with in order to make sure that the loss of AdSense doesn't completely demonetize their channel. After all, their channel is their company, as I've said before, and I just don't trust where this could go. I have no desire to migrate roasted opinions off of YouTube, but I'm starting to suspect that I might not have a choice by the time these investigations are over.